prison, especially those condemned to die. And we remember all those victims of communism, known and unknown. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, let light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and may they rise in glory. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Knowles. Uh, some of you will have noticed uh, a few weeks ago the unveiling of a statue in Trier, Germany. The statue was donated by the Communist Party of China, received by the city to commemorate, to celebrate uh, the life of Karl Marx on the 200th anniversary of his birth. In those celebrations in Trier and the many others held around the world to mark Karl Marx and his legacy, there was no mention of the victims, the victims of Marxist regimes, which in the name of equality brought a new form of slavery to the modern world. And if you want to know what the real legacy of Marxism is, it is this ceremony. It is dozens of countries represented here by those who will lay wreaths to commemorate the lives of those killed in some 40 communist countries since 1917. More than 100 million people killed. And today, 20% of the world's population still live in a country completely controlled by a communist party. Communism is not yet on the ash heap of history. I thank you for joining us here today to take a moment in our busy lives to remember the human cost of communism. At this time, it is my privilege and honor to introduce our chairman, Dr. Lee Edwards. If it were not for his efforts in 2007, this statue, the goddess of democracy, modeled after the Tiananmen Square uh, student protest statue, would not be sitting here. As we call him, Chairman Lee. Thank you, Marion, and we have such a wonderful group of young people, mostly young people, who are making sure that the work of the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation continues. Last fall, we startled many people in this city when we published the results of a YouGov poll that revealed that 44% of millennials in America would prefer to live under socialism rather than capitalism. Another 7% said they would prefer communism. But I wonder, really, would 44% of millennials really choose socialism if in exchange for free education and health care they would have to give up all of their private property, including their iPhone. Would 7% of millennials declare their willingness to live under communism if they knew the real costs of communism? The denial of free speech, free press, and free assembly. The imprisonment and execution of dissidents, no free and open elections, no independent judiciary, or rule of law, the dictatorship of the Communist Party in all matters and on all occasions. Now, according to the YouGov survey, one third of all Americans would prefer to live under socialism rather than capitalism. That's one third of all Americans. Why? That's the question which we have to ask ourselves. Why? Maybe is it due to idealism? the desire for a classless society in which everyone is equal and envy does not exist because everything is owned in common? Or is it a lack of knowledge, perhaps sheer ignorance? When asked how many people have died under communism, less than one third of Americans could provide the correct answer, over 100 million. Commented one millennial about his peers 
they haven't seen socialism's failures firsthand. My friends, we have our work cut out for us to educate young Americans and the youth of all nations about the many failures of socialism. Well, here are a few failures to get us going. Number one, socialism has never worked anywhere in the 100 years of its existence. Socialism in all its forms, from Marxism-Leninism in the Soviet Union, National Socialism in Nazi Germany, Maoism in China, State Socialism in India, and Democratic Socialism in Sweden has never come close to realizing the classless ideal of its founding fathers, Karl Marx. Two, Karl Marx has been proven wrong about nearly everything. The nation state has not withered away. The capitalism did not break down under the pressure of industrial concentration. Workers did not become revolutionaries, but reformers, and in many cases, capitalists. The middle class has not disappeared, but has expanded exponentially around the world. Marx's attempt to use Hegel to create a scientific socialism has been an abject failure. Three, socialism denies the existence of an essential human trait, human nature. Marx borrowed from the Enlightenment to say that human nature was malleable rather than constant. And the communist state, established by Lenin, wrote Richard Pipes, the late great historian from Harvard, was, quote, a grandiose experiment in public education create an entirely new type of human being, Soviet man. And yet, 70 years later, Mikhail Gorbachev gave up trying and dissolved the world's greatest failure in mass education. Four, socialism depends not upon the power of the people, but on the dictatorship of the party to remain in power. In the God that failed, a magnificent book. Six famous Western intellectuals describe their journey into communism and their exit when they encountered the gigantic gap between their vision of a socialist utopia and the totalitarian reality of the socialist state. After visiting the Soviet Union, the French Nobel laureate André Gide said this, I doubt whether in any country in the world, not even in Hitler's Germany, have the mind and spirit ever been less free, more bent, more terrorized, and indeed vassalized than in the Soviet Union. What price socialism? Well, we, we shouldn't limit ourselves just, just to numbers. The Chinese philosopher Lin Yutang listed the little terrors that provide, prevailed in China, making children of 12 subject to capital punishment, sending women to work in underground coal mines, harassing workers during their lunchtime with threats of prison if they were late returning to work. There were the costs and terror. A Soviet defector said of Soviet life, we lived in a world swarming with invisible eyes and ears. There were the costs to the world. Throughout the 20th and into the 21st century, there has been no crisis anywhere from Southeast Asia to the Caribbean, from Sub-Saharan Africa to the Middle East, in which the ideological ambitions of Moscow and its imitators were not involved. This is the reality of socialism, a pseudo-religion grounded in pseudo-science and enforced by political tyranny. This is the case against socialism that must be made to the millennials. Socialism is a god that failed, a science that never was, a political system headed for the ash heap of history. In our conflicted world, 
telling the truth about socialism has become a revolutionary act. And so, my friends, and so, my friends, let us all join the revolution. Thank you very much. The Truman Reagan Medal of Freedom is awarded to those individuals and institutions who have demonstrated a lifelong commitment to freedom and democracy and opposition to communism and all other forms of tyranny. Oswaldo Paya gave his life in service of these principles, and we are proud to honor him with our Truman Reagan Medal of Freedom. Almost six years ago, the people of Cuba lost a champion, Oswaldo Paya. Paya was the founder of the Christian Liberation Movement and a 2002 laureate of the Freedom of the European Parliament Sakharov Prize for Freedom of Thought. He dedicated his life to peacefully opposing authoritarian rule of the Communist Party of Cuba and advocating for, for pluralistic liberal democracy on an island that has languished under the iron fist of the Castro brothers for decades. The Cuban regime was so afraid of Oswaldo's work that they murdered him in a staged car accident in 2012. But his daughter, Rosa Maria Paya, is continuing the vital work of her father. Her organization, Cuba de Cide, is trying to organize a plebiscite calling for free elections with full political participation of all Cubans. Oswaldo Paya left us many legacies, but there is one which we should treasure most dearly, his immense capacity for hope. From the first days of his activist mission to the day of his death, Oswaldo never lost faith in the Cuban people and that Cuba should, could, and would be free. For this reason, VOC is proud to honor the memory of Oswald Opaya with the Truman Reagan Medal of Freedom. And we are honored that his daughter, Rosa Maria, and his wife, Ophelia, are here with us today. And they will be accepting the medal for Oswald. Rosa Maria herself faces threats to freedom and her life, but she is carrying on the legacy of her father and all those who have tried to bring freedom to the Castro's Island prison and she deserves the support of all of us in the free world who loved liberty and want justice. visit Cuba and we attend to mass we attend under great surveillance our persecution of the Cuban state security my mother and my father walk from our house till the square where the mass was getting place was taking place surrounded by agents of the state security after mass the press asked my father 
about the message of the uh, of the Pope and about the message for the Cuban people. In that occasion, my father said, the Pope has said that communism not longer works in Cuba. It is true. It does not work in Cuba because communism has never worked for good. It has only worked as a mechanism of oppression for an oligarchy to become rich, to have all the power and privilege while the majority is poor. And these poor people have no voice to say, not even that they are poor. My father dedicated his life to return that voice to the Cuban people and to return that voice to all the victims of the Castro regime, not just in Cuba, but in the rest of the region. That's why we really appreciate this recognition in the name of our family, in the name of the Cuban democratic movement and the Cuban people that now is also recognized, not just in the suffering, but in his fight and his, in, in its right to freedom. That freedom is going to come soon to Cuba. It's going to come also because we haven't lost our hope. My father helped us to keep that hope alive. And now that hope needs to be also fed and needs to be heard in the international community. Events like this help us to keep that hope alive. And we hope that this momentum of solidarity is going to be also the beginning of a of a new day for the Cuban people and for all those in Latin America in places like Venezuela and Nicaragua that have been also suffering because of the interference of the Cuban regime all those voices now can know that they have friends in the international community that are also ready not just to listen but to take action in favor of our liberation thank you so much at this time we move on to our roll call of nations uh, if you will please uh, those of you who are laying wreaths begin making your way to uh, your wreath and uh, I will introduce now Christina Olney our director of government relations uh, who will read the roll good morning on behalf of the foundation, I would like to thank the 25 embassies and diplomatic delegations who have joined us this morning to honor the 100 million victims of communist regimes around the world, to celebrate liberty where it has triumphed, and to further our pursuit of a world free from communism. I would also like to recognize the ambassadors and minister who have joined us for the ceremony this morning. His Excellency, Grigor Havhanisyan, Ambassador of Armenia. His Excellency, Timohir Stoichev, Ambassador of Bulgaria. His Excellency, Lori Lepik, Ambassador of Estonia. His Excellency, Dr. Laszlo Szabo, Ambassador of Hungary, His Excellency Andres Tekmanis, Ambassador of Latvia, His Excellency Rolandas Krisunas, Ambassador of Lithuania, and Mr. Ron Gossen, Minister Councillor of Canada. We will now commence the wreath laying ceremony. Embassies will be called in alphabetical order. And we will start with
Okay, excuse me. We are just uh, in the process of clearing some chairs and we will commence in a few minutes, so just bear with me. Thank you. Bueno, aquí estamos para honrar a, a todas las víctimas del comunismo y muy en particular eh, a las víctimas cubanas y muy orgulloso y honrado de que estén también honrando la memoria de Osvaldo Payá, una figura, un mártir eh, cubano que tanto representó y representa y representará para el pueblo cubano. Y tenemos que seguir eh, sus ideales su legado y por eso trabajamos arduamente con Cuba Decide para que el pueblo cubano en un futuro pueda decidir su futuro de democracia y libertad. Gracias, doctor. Muchas gracias. ¿Quieres que le tire una foto? Aquí, 